Good morning, 11.01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on this Saturday, May 25th, 2024. I'm XRP Future Millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan. So good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you in. We will get into the technical analysis, but first I want to update everybody on what's going on in my personal life. Uh, my son, as some of you know, was admitted two weeks ago. He got sick and wasn't eating, suffered from dehydration, was admitted for four days, and then they were happy. All of his tests came back. But me and Julie just felt like something was wrong. Like, not like anything from a perspective of like major organs or anything. Everything tested back good. He went to the pediatrician Wednesday and they said Tommy's doing great, that all these advanced, all this stuff. Well, we just know something's going on and he's developmentally delayed and he's on the spectrum and he has issues with food textures and things like this so all of a sudden yesterday so thursday he went to school was fine was eating doing everything i actually had to go to physical therapy an hour and a half after school came home was fine eating doing everything playing took a nap and when he woke up thursday night we could tell something was wrong we could tell psychologically something was wrong to where he looked like he did before we took him to the emergency room a couple weeks ago and mind you it was six days of no eating before they, it was finally like we went beyond and just went. He was he was drinking then, um, but it was just it got to a point where we took him and they just they treated it in a very wrong manner and they were looking at it from a standpoint that it shouldn't have been and it just delayed what should have happened and they went through all these tests and everything. So long story short, they let him go and for three weeks we've been trying to call the programs and stuff for the feeding programs, you know, so that he can get. He needs psychological help. So there was a recommendation made to me by somebody at the hospital at Beaumont about Horwell Children's Hospital. And that's up in Grand Rapids. Fortunately, it's only two and a half hours from where me and Julie live. Yesterday, my son decided he don't want to eat again. And this time there's no fever. He didn't throw up, no sickness. So now it's psychological and we know it. So in order to do what's best for my son, and I don't know how much it's going to cost me to go up there because I'm going to likely either opt for the first few days because we're going to go right to the Corwell, um children's hospital the emergency room and go right to the source because three miles down the road they have an inpatient facility and even an outpatient program so if it's filled up for inpatient obviously even if he's got to get a g-tube for a feeding tube or whatever they're going to decide i need to go to the source now so that i can go somewhere where they're not just going to cast him off when he's looking fine because there's nothing actually wrong with my son all of his organs are fine nothing's wrong from a diabetic standpoint his sister's type one so obviously that was a concern before so it's 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 psychological with food and um you know he's got an issue and i believe i understand perfectly now and i believe this is what my son is dealing with of uh arfid or arfid it's avoiding restrictive food intake is a fairly new eating disorder children with arfid are extremely selective eaters and sometimes have little interest in eating food they may eat a limited variety of preferred foods which can lead to poor growth and poor nutrition well fortunately for our son We've always given him like supplements and even now he's taking a full multivitamin uh, that has all of your major vitamins and things like that. And then also a vitamin D and D3 uh, supplement as well that I got from, you know, obviously prescribed and stuff. So I'm taking the extreme step now instead of taking him back to the place that's likely going to just put him on IVs and just send him on his way with no real care. I'm going to take him to the proper place, Corwell Children's Hospital, the emergency room. And because we had an emergency situation two weeks ago, um, and it's only been a day. See, no, I called up to the hospital where he went. Still been an hour and a half and a resident hasn't called back. They didn't seem concerned because they said it's only been a day since, well, try to, and you know, because they always say 72 hours if you're not eating food, then it's the time for concern. But for me, I can see it's psychological. So I'm going to take him up there. So I'm going to do my technical analysis. We're going to leave in about two hours at 1 p.m., we should get there around 4, 4.30, my time, Eastern Standard Time. I'm assuming he's going to be admitted on the spot once we get to the emergency room. And then uh, Julie's mom's going with us. We're picking her up on the way. She's absolutely fantastic for doing this on the spot. She came over this morning. We were going to go to the farmer's market, and we sprung this on her because me and Julie came to the decision last night because we knew what was going on. And I apologize for this long explanation as most people will probably just leave. Um... But I wanted to update everybody and actually talk it out with everybody so you actually know what's going on. 
So we're gonna take them to the proper place and there's only four of these type of facilities in the world. So we're very fortunate to have one in Michigan so close to my house. So why beat around the bush? Why not go where I need to go? And so for the next few months, things are gonna be different. I'll still be around. And honestly, I might be around more because now I'm gonna have to uh, try to pull in a little more uh, revenue from advertising and such. So I may need to do extra videos while I'm at the hospital and then in the, cause he's gonna end up in a patient program, whether it's inpatient or outpatient, I ain't leaving Grand Rapids without a solution. So if I gotta stay in a hotel for six months, I'm gonna max my credit cards out. I got $30,000 on the credit card. I've got a little rainy day fun just through crypto. There's 10 to $12,000 that I could blow through. And then uh, through commodities, I've got, well, I gotta keep uh, 7,000 or 8,000 for just tax purposes for the year for my house. And then me and Julie even talked about the extreme. If it runs us up 25, 30,000, we'll sell our house that we have paid off, which would suck because it's in our family. And we'd find a house for like 175,000 in the same area and uh, just pay it off and do the same as such. So we're willing to go to the extreme for my son. I don't want anybody to be like, oh my God, I'm watching him. I have to send a donation because this is happening. That's not on you. If you want to send a donation for what I do, or if you're like, okay, I have, you know, I want to sign up for his army or whatever. You can do that. That's on you. But I'm not begging. I'm not asking. Um, I'm just telling you what's going on and what I, you're going to have to experience with me. And uh, I'm going to be going through a lot of hardships here. But I believe in the power of positivity and taking action. And by taking action, I can get a solution. If I, if I sit in limbo and we just beat around the bush, my son's never going to get better. The bottom line is he's only four right now. And by the time he's 18, this is all going to be so far behind him. He's going to love us even more and not even know why. So with that being said, we're going to get into the XRP technical analysis. Um, we're up to 54.19 cents. We've been talking about the opportunity here with uh, the XRP Bitcoin pairing. And also I left everybody in the live with the buying opportunity. I told everybody I was buying $2,136 because that's what I had in my account of AMP, which came out to 336,000 tokens roughly on uh, BitUnix. And I bought it at exactly 00684, just like I told everybody I was going to. Not up much, down 2.35% today, but I don't even care. Like this is on the back burner in my head. So I'm gonna let this do what it needs to do. Crypto, I just feel, I actually feel at peace, me and Julie do, because of uh, what we have come to the decision and the rapid decision and the, you know, the uh, extreme decision, but we feel good. And I think, uh, we found a little solitude and grace by her mom wanting to go. So it was actually a blessing. So, but we're gonna go through the technical analysis now. We got 13 minutes in this update. We'll go through XRP. We'll go through the XRP Bitcoin pairing. We'll go through Bitcoin since it's up 580 points here. And it is a thinly traded weekend on this holiday weekend. So the theory is for me as well, it probably won't be as packed in that emergency room. I mean, you might get a lot of people that hurt themselves, but since it's a children's hospital, hopefully, you know, you can take the extreme when you have to. So I'll update everybody as we go. I have zero fear because my son, there's nothing acts. I know he's not going there for life. Threat. Well, to be honest though, it is life threatening because he's not eating, but you understand what I'm saying. He's not going there because he's got cancer. He's not going there because he's got kidney failure, something wrong with his pancreas or spleen, any of that stuff. His chest, his heart, his lungs, it's everything's fine. So now we have to get to uh, the psychological reasons why. So he's going to have to just go through a healthy uh, thing. So I'm going to do, I'll uh, play my intro and then uh, we're going to get into this technical analysis. Please make sure to hit that like button so that YouTube recommends this update. And I'll catch you on the other side of the short intro. Okay, welcome back everybody. Let's get into this technical analysis why we have the opportunity here together. Um, so XRP is up 1.08% at 54.22 cents. We currently, I still believe we have a chance at that 57.4 cents. It's something that we've talked about for a very long time. It's just a matter of can we get up there. Right now we're looking good. We have a golden cross in the four hourly, but the 20 cross in the 200 and we might actually have a more prominent golden cross here as some would prefer 
to wait for the confirmation of the 50 cross and the 200 before they feel comfortable with the golden cross. So right now though, the 50 is just about to cross the 200 and it's, I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll happen in 47 minutes, especially if we stay over 54 cents or even over 53.7 area. That's plenty of room to where it should pull this golden cross here in the uh, 50 cross and the 200. So we have that working for us in our favor. And then if we can continue to push up, we have a major resistance area. It's somewhere between 57.1 if we hold this support. So right now, we're trying to confirm a breakout to 57.14 cents, but that can only happen if we break and hold 53.77 cents here. And the last two times in this rotation we tried, we failed. Fortunately, we came down for confirmation on the uptrending support, and we're able to take it from there. And now we also had 53.4 as we've talked about. And I drew out this inverse head and shoulders for everybody and it retraced a couple times, but ultimately we're looking for it to come up in this area. And in today's terms, it's right around, actually it's starting to meet up closer. So 57.1 cents is, is pretty fair. That's pretty fair. 57.1 cents is what I would absolutely anticipate, assuming this plays true. And as everybody knows, yes, I bought the amp. I call, um, ended up being, I believe it was sometime yesterday, sometime early in the day yesterday when it hit the uh what was it the 684 level 00684 so and i know it went down farther but i just i picked a number where i thought it was a good buy when we did the live two days ago so that's where i ended up buying it but i also have and this is what you just have to pay attention to we have this cup and handle with xrp so just pay attention to that rotation that can continue to happen that's why we continue to say, as long as we're in that cup and handle, especially, you know, the handle for, uh, formation, very, very bullish setup until it's not. And right now it still is. And then I've also talked about the XRP Bitcoin pairing. And that the key to that is, is the whole point of this is you buy in by buying Bitcoin. And then you buy, you um, use the Bitcoin to buy into the XRP Bitcoin pairing. By doing it like that, you're betting on it that XRP is going to go up faster than Bitcoin. Now, the cool thing about this is, is I have about, let's see, 4,300, uh, 4,300, let's see, I'm going to pull up my max C so everybody can, so we can know where we're at, because I put a tiny bit more in yesterday, it wasn't extraordinary, like 25 bucks, so right now, I have $4,479 of my money. I'm up 1.82%. To put it in perspective, up $81. It's worth $4,561. But the point is, I could decide to sell this out as XRP. And right now, it would, it would um, I could switch it over for 8,427 tokens. So, but my, my, you would probably cost yourself money in the long run. Because what you're betting against is instead of selling it out in XRP, but you also have that option, so you can remember that. So now I've got over 20,000 XRP as well by doing this, if you look at it in that terms, because I have over 12,000 just sitting there. Um, so now I have over, so I've been able to expand my bag in a really unique way, as I told everybody I would be. And I've been telling everybody every step of the way about the XRP Bitcoin pairing. And the reason why is the weekly is so overbought. And yeah, we can still have price depreciation, like I said. I was buying it all the way down, even if that means I got to buy it all the way down, not the 4.6, but all the way down here for like the 7.1 area. So now you're looking for Bitcoin to depreciate in perspective of, so you have the gold-silver ratio, right? So you have the gold-silver ratio, the ratio of silver to gold. Well, when that ratio starts going out of whack, you know, things are a little bit out of, out of place. And if silver's so out of whack, like how it was before, and silver was anywhere from 80 to 95 to 107 to 1 when I was telling everybody, especially anywhere over 80 to 1 ratio, you buy silver instead of gold. Well, right now with the ratio where it's at, it's like how that was with silver to gold. Right now, silver is XRP and gold would be Bitcoin. And right now, the silver to gold ratio, the XRP to Bitcoin ratio is out of whack. And that being said, no matter how much farther out of whack it goes, you would continue to buy it in the bottom in the hopes of, instead of buying it at this level and being able to trade it out, in the hopes now in the future that the appreciation, even if both are going up, would far away in XRP's favor, especially when you start looking at this weekly time frame, 
look how oversold or overbought we are and we're just waiting for the proper shift so i'm buying that weekly time frame i don't care anything up in the daily the one the four hourly i don't care i'm buying the weekly just like i did with xrb healthcare and it took time and i started buying anywhere from one nine or one seven all the way up and then i have a average of 2.7 cents and as we know we're over a one bagger on that and same philosophy here it's way oversold in the weekly it's showing the first signs of something going right hasn't happened yet but we're in a great position here and it's allowed me to not only have the opportunity to sell out through uh, the xrp bitcoin pairing when appreciation does happen and then when you sell out simply what that means is when you sell back into bitcoin it's worth more bitcoin it's worth more so you can get more money you understand because if i have 3500 or 4500 dollars and I sell it out into XRP, I can get the value of what 8,900 tokens are worth or 8,800 tokens. But let's just say the appreciation goes up and the SAT level, let's just say, goes up to 970. When all of a sudden it's, it does me more favor to sell it out into Bitcoin and then turn it back into cash, if that's my ultimate objective, than to just sell it out into cash through XRP. You see what I'm saying? You've got the, that's why a lot of people, when the XRP Bitcoin pairing's out of whack like it is now, they will choose to expand their XRP holding simply by buying Bitcoin, throwing it into XRP and Bitcoin pairing to bet against Bitcoin appreciating in the long term over XRP since they're holding it long term anyhow. That's how I am with XRP. So this is a way that if this works out as I foresee, it's going to be a spectacular move to where I've been able to appreciate 9,000 almost XRP here if I want to go that route. So... It's just something uh, that I've been trying to show everybody over the last three weeks or four weeks now. But this is something that keeps my mind at ease with what's going on with my son. So I'll continue to do these updates and you might even see it at a more rapid pace uh, once he gets settled in and admitted and into his own room and things like that because I've got to pay the bills. And uh, I might have to make more active trades to try to produce more revenue, which I'm very good at. But that's going to make me have to do more detailed analysis. And I like to talk about my active trades I'm thinking about during my lives, which means there would be more lives and more opportunities for us to grow together. So with that being said, let me get to Bitcoin real quick. And then I'll show XRP Healthcare. We already showed AMP. Um, so with Bitcoin, we came up, we created this inverse head and shoulders I was talking about. I, I, I ran ahead of what I thought was building on this inverse uh, pattern. So... I think it was built a little bit farther down, but this is like a right arm that's playing out beautifully, like an inverse right, like a, it's playing out in an inverse pattern here, is what I'm saying. I'm trying to say it's running out in an inverse pattern. So, we've got this, boom, boom, like this. It'll probably do something like this, boom. And then we, hopefully it'll ride up for Bitcoin. Um, if it gets over this area, 88K. And I'm not just saying that because, hey, I want to sound cool. I'm saying that because we had a prior pattern formation that was a rising channel. And when Bitcoin fell out of it, that's where it should have gave up, this pattern. But what ended up happening is it came back up and now it's trying to use this area as support. It even had a big wick down to support. And now it broke out of the pennant flag consolidation. The technical move up is at 88K. And if you're just asking me, Tom, well, what the hell? How can you even say that? The cup and handle would suggest that that's exactly where it needs to go. And what makes it feel even more prevalent is the first tier cup created a beautiful handle and now it's bouncing out through a pennant flag. So for all those reasons and more, like I said, when everybody was crying bearish and they're all going to sell, it's just not the right time yet. And for me, I see a major opportunity developing in that XRP Bitcoin pair. If I'm wrong, I don't even care because I know I'll just keep buying more until I'm right. Because it's so undervalued right now, everybody just needs to understand where this came from. Where the XRP Bitcoin pairing came from, folks. I mean, when you want to talk about undervalued, the only time it's really been more under is when it was way down here. And that was at the 407. Remember, we already bounced off of that without having a magnificent spike. And what I'm trying to just show everybody is there's been a great deal. Boom, into an inverse left shoulder inverse head nice dump down did not invalidate this inversion pattern if this plays out properly you could find yourself in a major reshuffle here a major rally and look at all the stuff with the fit 21 
and just what's happening to the SEC, and it looks to be working in XRP's favor with the new legislation. I mean, something big is setting up. And this was a descending consolidation. These are bullish reversals in the making. And now we've got into our expansion zone. This is something huge that could be building. And I'm not saying it's going to happen. But imagine if this plays true and it does play back up there. You're talking about right now we're at barely the 7. We'll call it the 716. And we're not even there. Sat level. And every time in the history of this pairing. Every time it comes down to the 405 sat level roughly. And at least bounces off of it. Even if there's a wick through it. We have. Uh, this would be the smallest rally we've ever had. <laughs> this would be the smallest rally we've ever had. Coming out of the 405 sat level. Put that in. This would be the smallest rebound we would ever have. And it's 600%. Well. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. But if there's a 600% gain from here. That's $24,000 on my trade plus. You know, maybe this is my lineup for what I'm going to need for the future to pay for my son's stuff. Um, but Dad will figure it out because I have a nest egg a little bit from what I do. And right now, real quick, because i got to go. XRP Healthcare is up 5.67%, right around a one-bagger. But it's in a very nice consolidation here. And I, I could even see it breaking down to 3.2 again. I'm not convinced that it's ready to break out yet. And nor do I want it to. I'd rather continue to stack some, but I haven't been able to buy it in two months. I have it staking for 20%. Um, and it's doing rather well because it's up a one-bagger. But I was putting stuff into it every day for like a two- to three-week period. But then the price just appreciated over four cents. And my average was up to 2.7, and I wasn't willing to bring it any higher. So I said if it comes back down to like 3.1, I'd be I'd be willing to... Or 2-4, I'd be, I'd be tapping back into it. But it should backtest here at some point, although it did once. If it were to break down, you'd assume the 305 level. Have a blessed day, everybody. I'll keep everybody updated. And positivity in the comments, please. And if you want to say a prayer and can say a prayer, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the name of my son, Thomas Speak of the Third, we would be eternally grateful for it. So, like I always say, don't forget to give thanks to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You never know what any day has to bring to you. But at least today, I prayed on it yesterday. And God gave me the wisdom and showed me the way. And now I feel no, I feel no anxiety. I feel no fear. In fact, I feel alive because I feel like we finally have a solution for my son. So stay blessed, everybody. And if you want one more reason to smile, the possibility that this is in fact pushing in an inverted head and shoulders and it can bounce off of here, it would lead us up to some fantastic, fantastic gains. Have a blessed day, everybody.